Alrighty, party peoples of the interwebs, Iman Khalif, the Algerian boxer who people were accusing of being a man, has filed a criminal complaint against Elon Musk, J.K. Rowling in France, and the statists of the world are rejoicing. <laughs> Viva Fry, former Montreal litigator turned current Florida rumbler in my home office doing another end of the day vlog. This morning I was on with the unusual suspects and Alex Jones. And if you haven't watched those episodes, they're on the internet somewhere. Go check them out. The news of the day, Iman Khalif, the Algerian boxer who defeated the Italian boxer in 16 seconds. The Italian boxer took a couple of punches and then walked off the rink in tears. Italian fighter Angela Carini abruptly withdrawing from her match against Algeria's Aman Khalif after just 46 seconds and some hard punches. Khalif's participation in the women's matches has been under renewed scrutiny. She was disqualified from last year's world championships after the International Boxing Association said she failed a gender eligibility test. And the world on the internet was going nuts because they were accusing Iman Khalif of being a man and they're saying this is what happens when you get men in women's sports and there was some controversy around it because the world does not yet know definitively what sex Iman Khalif is. Although many are saying Iman Khalif is a woman, she was born a woman, she was raised a woman and she competes in the women category. A lot of people were also saying something is off here. Iman just failed the International Boxing Association Association at gender test because apparently Khalif either tested too high for certain hormones or was diagnosed to have XY chromosomes, which would exclude Khalif from women's boxing, which presumably goes by the XX chromosomes, and that is where the controversy was born. Pun intended. Now, of course, we live in a hyper political world where everybody heard of this gender issue, this gender confusion with the Algerian boxer. The Olympic Association saying they were relying on self identification and the Algerian passport. And this is not necessarily a judgment on Algeria in particular, but there are some countries out there where I would not necessarily trust the government identification as the basis for determining what category a person might compete in in the Olympics. One can very easily think of some corrupt reasons for which a country would falsify certain documents if it meant giving their athlete a competitive advantage in competitive sports. I'm not saying that's what's happening. All that I'm saying is that if we are relying only on the passport of a country and the self-identification of the athlete in order to determine determine what category they go in when they recently failed a gender test from the International Boxing Association, I do not blame people for having certain questions. Now, people were quick to write off the IBA's determination or disqualification, I should say, of Khalif previously because apparently the IBA has been infiltrated by Russia and therefore they do not produce anything of trustworthiness. So disregard and just go to the Algerian passport and the assurances that Khalif is indeed a woman, even if Khalif might happen to have XY chromosomes, which according According to some people's definition would make her biologically a male even if she had external female genitalia. If she has XY chromosomes she might have what's referred to as internal testes despite external female genitalia. It might procure her an advantage in women competitive sports but because everybody is living in a hyper political time everyone immediately jumped on what they probably thought was another trans issue as in a political issue as opposed to a medical issue of fairness. Now I was a little bit skeptical right from the beginning and my tweets have aged like fine wine. Viva Fry at the Viva Fry, the XY chromosome boxer at the Olympics who has been in the news, Iman Khalif. Do we know if the person is, quote, transgender, end quote, through, quote, self-identification, end quote, slash gender dysphoria? Is it a case of a person born with female genitals, but XY chromosome? Is it possible corruption of a country possibly cheating to win a medal? This would not change anything as relates to the unfairness to the other women, but it would certainly impact the line of critique. Anyone know? August 1, 2024. More important than having an opinion, even an edgy opinion, is having the facts upon which to have that opinion and in a later tweet I said the following in response to Tyler, am I wrong or is it not the case that if you do about 30 seconds of research, you learn this is a biological woman who has been a woman her whole life? To which I replied, I think you are wrong. It has been confirmed Khalif has XY chromosomes. From the Olympic Committee's own statement, they are relying on a passport to determine, quote, gender, end quote. And they continually refer to, quote, gender, end quote, instead of, quote, sex, end quote. If it turns out Khalif's issue is medical and not, quote, self-identification, end quote, then you still have a problem in terms of fairness. It would just be a medical issue. Issue of fairness, not a political one.
Now, in the flurry of tweets, accusations, articles on the issue, and in the fog of war, some people put out some tweets. This is what happens when you have men in women's sports. A few of the notable tweets came from Donald Trump, J.K. Rowling, Elon Musk, and Riley Gaines. And I'm not reading these to put anyone on blast. I think it's a legitimate issue one way or the other. It just might not be a trans issue. It might be a medical hormonal issue, but the same question of fairness arises. But here are a few of the tweets that have led to Khalif filing a criminal complaint in the courts of France. J.K. K Rowling at JK underscore Rowling. Could any picture sum up our new men's rights movement better? The smirk of a male who's known he's protected by a misogynist sporting establishment, enjoying the distress of a woman he's just punched in the head and whose life's ambitions he's just shattered. From Riley Gaines at Riley underscore Gaines, men don't belong in women's sports and Elon Musk replying to her at Elon Musk, absolutely. Now the amazing thing is it's really a sign of the times. People have not only gotten used to lawfare, which they should never get used to lawfare because using the law to achieve political ends is an abuse of the legal process. But not only are we living through an era where people have gotten used to it, people rejoice in the use of lawfare against ideological adversaries. And so the news of the day is Khalif has filed a criminal complaint in France against a number of politically unpopular, at least according to the woke mob characters, and the internet is rejoicing. Go get him, use the lawfare system to shape, lock them up for their words is basically what the mob is saying. The fascinating thing also is all all of these articles coming out and I'm trying to find the original complaint. All of these articles are referring to a criminal complaint that was filed in France. None of them seem to have actually seen the original complaint. I was going through link after link, like they put a hyperlink in and they say, Khalif filed a criminal complaint and there's a hyperlink. You click on that, it just goes to another article that refers to a criminal complaint. You click on that hyperlink, it just goes to another article. I don't think anybody reporting on this criminal complaint has actually read the criminal complaint. I think there's one source that summarized it and then everyone else just goes and reports on that source, which reports on that source, but the bottom line, it seems Khalif has filed a criminal complaint for cyber bullying and harassment in France. And according to some out there, the basis of the criminal complaint is spurious at best. From an article in The Spectator, Iman Khalif's laughable lawsuit against J.K. Rowling. And midway through the article, it writes as follows. James Tidmarsh, a Paris lawyer who is qualified in both England and France, tells me, quote, in order to amount to cyber bullying under French law, there would need to be intent to harm as well as a pattern of harassment against the same targeted individual. If there is no pattern of harassment shown against Khalif and no specific intent to harm Khalif, the criminal case will not proceed. Even if it were to proceed, I seriously doubt that Musk could be extradited to France over this. The offense would also need to be a crime in the States for him to be at all concerned, which presumably under US First Amendment guarantee of freedom of speech, it is not. Well, one thing should be abundantly clear of these commie statists. They don't give a sweet bugger all about First Amendment rights. They don't give a sweet bugger all about Second Amendment rights. They don't actually give a sweet bugger all about freedoms at all. Because according to them, freedoms are dangerous. Words are violence. Silence is violence. And if you use words on the internet that hurt their fifis, well, they then think they can go abuse of the criminal process to try to literally put you in jail. From Variety, Olympic gold medalist boxer Iman Khalif files online harassment complaint after gender controversy. And then fleshing out the controversy, during her run at the Olympics, the 25-year-old athlete was bullied on social media after one of her opponents, Italian boxer Angela Carini, abandoned the quarterfinal match 46 seconds into the start and declared she, quote, never felt a punch like this, end quote. Khalif was disqualified by the International Boxing Association from last year's Women World Championships after she failed a gender eligibility test due to elevated levels of testosterone in her system, but was born female and does not identify as transgender or intersex. Notice the Variety article talks about hormone levels and doesn't mention anything about the XY chromosomes that Khalif is alleged to have. For that, you need to go to an article from the BBC. What does science tell us about boxing's gender role? We do know that the process of sex determination starts when a fetus is developing. Most females get two X chromosomes, XX, while most males get an X and a Y chromosome, XY. Chromosomes influence a person's sex, but hormones are important too, before birth as well as later on during puberty. While the baby is still growing in the womb, hormones help the reproductive organs develop. However, at some point through the pregnancy, some babies' reproductive organs don't develop in the way most people's do. This can be caused by conditions called DSDs, differences in sex development. 
So what do we know about the two boxers at the heart of the gender row? Both fighters were said to have failed International Boxing Association gender eligibility tests last year, but there has been conflicting information whether XY chromosomes or elevated testosterone were found. Well, there you have a mild disputed fact that might itself be determinate as a matter of law if Khalif in fact has XY chromosomes. Well, some people might think that she's still a female because she was born female with at least external female genitalia and was raised female, but but chromosomally, some people might consider Khalif to be a male. So that might be a matter of fact. That might be something of a big stick in the wheels of this status tool of war lawfare against disfavored political figures. And then when it comes to criminal harassment, cyberbullying under French law, there's that minor issue that, yeah, it actually might have to be repeated, targeted with ill intent, not a mere dispute on a matter of fact, or at least a matter of opinion as to what makes a woman a woman, a biological woman a woman versus a male a male. And for that, we'll go to an article in Pajiba.com. I don't actually know what this publication is. Could J.K. Rowling and Elon Musk go to prison for harassing Iman Khalif? Now, for the wordsmiths out there, the lawyers, or at least people who pay attention to logic and grammar, you will notice how the conclusion is sort of baked into the headline there. Will they go to jail for harassment? It needs to be determined in law if what they did, in fact, constitutes harassment, even under this French law, and I would argue that it absolutely does not. Under French law, aggravated cyber harassment requires repetitive acts, intents to harm, use of electronic means, and significant impact on the victim. The alleged actions of Rowling and Musk, accusations that Khalif is a man and inflammatory comments about her participation in women's sports could potentially meet these criteria, particularly given the global reach of their statements and the obvious trauma reported by Khalif. If the investigation confirms that the actions of Musk and Rowling were repetitive and intended to harm, they could face prosecution. Repetitive and intended to harm, I would argue that they were by no means repetitive. I would also argue that they were by no means intended to harm. These are people expressing their sincerely held beliefs, which might be entirely justified in science. But for the time being, Khalif has filed this criminal complaint, so I presume they're going to investigate it. And then French authorities are going to determine whether or not they follow through with a prosecution based on the complaint. We'll see where it goes. I don't think it goes anywhere because I think it's a load of crap. But we are living in hyper-political times where authorities might use this as a pretext to go after politically disfavored people, in particular Musk, who the European Union was just going after the other day, for daring to sit down with Donald Trump and say, I will not censor Donald Trump in advance despite your demands that I do so. But regardless of how you feel about J.K. Rowling, Riley Gaines, Donald Trump, Elon Musk, whom I do sincerely believe are all genuine and good people, you should be very, very very weary about the statist power being wielded here. Governments across the world using their power, their regulatory power and their criminal prosecutorial power to threaten, intimidate and silence dissenting speech, speech that they don't like. You might think you like it right now, but go back to that poem from the Holocaust. At first they came for the union workers, but I said nothing because I wasn't a union worker and I don't remember if it's actually union workers, but the punchline to all of it is, and then they came for me, but no one said anything because there was no one left. If you think that they're not going to come after you one day, if you hold politically dis favorite speech. You're an idiot. Enjoy the power now because one day it's going to be used against you if you let them get away with this. So don't let them get away with this. Don't rejoice in it. Free speech is the most valuable thing on earth because when they control your speech, they control your thought. And yes, you can't use free speech to commit crimes, to threaten, to harass, etc, etc. But to express sincerely held political beliefs that you might not like, well, my goodness, everyone has those. And sometimes the wrong belief one day turns out to be the accurate belief the next. And we'll see what happens. If this complaint goes through, we will find out if Khalif actually has XY chromosomes, and then we'll see what happens in a court of law. And that is the news of the day. I am schwitzing like an absolute pig. This is the risk of doing a car vlog in Florida. Even after the sun goes down, it gets hot and humid in a car. If you like what I do, make sure that you are liked, shared, subscribed, that you have notifications turned on. If you want to support the work that I do, you can go to vivabarnslaw.locals.com. 10 bucks a month, 100 bucks a year if you get the entire year at one shot. You can go to vivafry.com for merch, but most importantly, and it's free, just share my stuff with someone who you think might like it and share it with someone who you think might not like it because they are probably the ones who need to hear it the most. But most importantly, exercise, eat healthy, sunlight, talk to people in real life, and now you know your vlog. Peace out, peeps. Booyah! Holy hell, it's hot.